In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. Good Saturday morning. Jesus had been healing and teaching and preaching and having the occasional run-in with the authorities, and all of a sudden he stops to appoint his apostles. It's not like he hasn't been collecting followers for quite some time. Early on, he called some fishermen to follow him. Just a few scenes ago, it was his disciples who got him in trouble by plucking grains of corn. So, why this account of Jesus appointing the twelve at this point in his ministry? I think it's several things. First, Luke is clearly making a distinction. A lot of people count themselves as Jesus' disciples, but some of them are now to be set apart as apostles, those who Jesus is sending. It's as if Jesus is forming the leadership core of his mission. And perhaps it's precisely because he is at a point where he wants to focus on the future. Maybe it's precisely because he's now facing increased opposition that he needs to name the team that he wants to accomplish this mission. So he appoints the 12. Note, however, that he doesn't just pick them randomly. He begins with prayer, a whole night of prayer. How often, I wonder, do we approach the significant decisions of our life, the important transitions, the major challenges, with a significant time in prayer? What I appreciate about this scene is that Jesus recognizes the gravity of his decision, so makes time to bring that decision and all the other things he's contemplating to Father God in prayer. Jesus takes seriously the mission Father God has entrusted to him. This is something we should do also. And then there's the last name, Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. This somber note at the end of prayer and deliberation, it's a little jarring. Mixed in with the plans and the expectancy and the excitement of the upcoming mission is a reminder that Jesus' mission will ultimately lead him to a cross. I wonder if that was part of the prayer too. Father God, we come to you in prayer, bringing our hopes and dreams, fears and failures, decisions and challenges, trusting in your will and mercy as we know them both through your crucified Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.